This video is brought to you by, not this plant, but Storyblocks, the best place to go to get unlimited stock footage. What's cooking everybody? Dave Mays here with Kinotika, and today we're talking about the two newest and best drones of 2020, the Mavic Air 2 and the Autel Evo 2. Which one's best for you? Find out in this video. The Mavic Air 2 and the Evo 2 are obviously very different looking in terms of size and colors and even price point, but they share a lot of similarities between them. And if you're a first time buyer of a drone or even somebody who has an older DJI drone, for example, you might be considering one of these two drones as an option for an upgrade or as your first drone purchase. So the purpose of this video is to hopefully help you figure out which drone is best for you. And of course, we've linked both drones down in the description below. If you are interested in purchasing one, we would greatly appreciate it if you used one of those affiliate links. First off, these two drones are targeted at two different types of people. The Mavic Air 2 is kind of geared for those mid-range consumers who want something a little bit better than what the lower end can give them, but don't want to go all the way up to the pro line. This really falls in a sweet spot in terms of price point and performance, and to top it all off, this thing is really compact and easy to travel with. The Evo 2 from Autel improves a lot from the first version of the Evo, adding 8K and much better obstacle avoidance features with the drone. Now, even though the Autel Evo 2 has an 8K recording option, it does share a very similar sensor size and feature set of the Mavic Air 2. Even though the Air 2 doesn't do 8K, all the other resolutions are basically identical. So let's look at some test footage between these two drones, all shot in 4K at the beach. I know you want to be there. Everybody had an ocean across the USA. Everybody been so feral. Now I shot all the footage that you see in this video in the standard mode. I wasn't shooting in any log format or in the higher resolution format on the Autel. This is straight out of the box, normal standard picture profiles with no settings adjusted. I did shoot manual exposure, but that gives us the best idea of what both of these drones are capable of straight out of the box. Now, if you exclude the 8K resolution from the Autel, you get very similar frame rates and resolutions between these two drones. They're both sporting a 48 megapixel, one and a half inch sensor, and are both capable of shooting at 4K at 60 frames per second. You got a little itchy itch. Ah. They can also shoot at high frame rate options at 120 frames per second, and the Mavic Air 2 can even shoot at 240 frames per second. That's pretty impressive for such a small, compact, affordable option. <laughs> The Mavic Air 2 has a natural profile as well as a D cine like profile that gives you a little bit more dynamic range so you can grade in post production. The Autel also has a standard mode that looks pretty pleasing straight out of the box, but it also has a full log format, which gives you the ability to color grade and do some fancy stuff in post production. Now let's talk about 8K. 8K on this drone is really amazing and it's a huge upgrade from the previous version. If you're a professional who needs that extra resolution, and you know you want that, and you also want some of the extra features that this drone brings, then maybe you would consider getting this. But once you get into the price point of the Evo 2, you should really consider the older Mavic 2 Pro series that has a Hasselblad one inch sensor and has the ability to shoot HDR and 10 bit footage internally. Now it doesn't shoot 8K resolution, but that larger sensor size, in my opinion, is better than the higher resolution. The Mavic 2 Pro also has more obstacle avoidance features similar to the Evo 2. Well, Oh, I'm gonna change my shirt and go in front of the lake now. So the Autel battery is rated at 7,100 milliamps and the Mavic Air 2 battery is 3,500 milliamps. Autel is saying that this battery life is rated at like 35 minutes to 40 minutes. The Air 2 is supposed to be rated around 32, 34 minutes. I found neither of them to be completely accurate when it came to their website. I spent a lot of time testing this. In fact, I literally just sat here and flew around in circles at the lake here and tested the battery life of both. I didn't want to just take it off and let it just sit there for 30 minutes because that's not a real life 
use case, I actually flew the drone in circles around the lake until the batteries died. So the Autel decided to return to home with seven minutes left and it flew for about 23 minutes until it needed to come home. And then with the Mavic Air 2, I actually have two batteries so I was able to test both of them and kind of average that out between the two of those. And the Mavic Air 2 decides to fly home when it has about five to six minutes left over, give or take and I was able to fly for about 22 minutes on one of these batteries. Roughly both of these are giving you around 30 minutes, but I would say to be really conservative with your estimation when you're out flying, shoot for about 25 minutes uh, maximum flight time. These batteries are significantly more expensive than the Air 2 batteries, so it's not only more cost efficient to buy the Mavic Air 2 outright, it's more cost efficient to buy the batteries as well. Now let's talk build quality, between these two drones. First off, the Mavic Air 2 is a tank even though it's small and lightweight. The drone on the Mavic Air 2 is perfect, I think. It's the perfect size, it's the perfect weight, and it's kind of the best middle ground drone in DJI's lineup. This guy, on the other hand, is a chunky beast. One thing that I do like about the Evo is the fact that the legs don't do the kind of flippy fold out move that the uh, Mavics always do. Now let's talk build quality on the controllers here. If you're comparing the Mavic Air original to this one, this controller is extremely different. It's a much chunkier design and it doesn't have the fold out antennas on it. The antenna is actually built into the phone grip itself. You've got a nice included cable for your phone, so it's really compact, really well designed. This controller on the other hand is a little plasticky and kind of cheap. I also don't like these little grips here. It actually started to hurt my hands as I was holding it and using it. But the thing that I do like about this controller is the fact that it has a display built into the screen. So you don't actually have to use a phone anymore when you're controlling your drone. I had no problems with dropout with this, although technically the OcuSync technology from DJI is going to give you better range overall. But here at the lake, I was flying everything line of sight, so I didn't have any problems with dropout with either controller, this one or the DJI one. This one's a little cheap, but I do love the built-in display. I'm interrupting briefly to tell you today about our sponsor, Storyblocks. Storyblocks is an extremely useful tool. If you're in the middle of a project and you realize that you're just missing those extra little bits that really put that story together, that's where Storyblocks comes in and is kind of the glue for your project. I do this all the time for my YouTube videos. I realize ah, I don't have this one establishing shot or I don't have this one asset. Storyblocks has thousands and thousands of video clips that are completely available to you. You can download them unlimited in 4K resolution, HD resolution, MP4, ProRes, all sorts of crazy stuff. Let's say you're going to a park and you're doing a quick interview about some corporate project, but you want some corporate footage of people like sitting in a desk or sitting in an office, or maybe you're making some sort of special ad that is relevant to what's going on right now. All you have to do is just go into Storyblocks, type in uh, corporate people, typing and there you go you got everything you need they also have green screen assets and alpha things so like if you want a smoke bomb effect or an explosion or lightning bolts you can find those there too in addition to all the stock footage with your membership you also get a bunch of incredible after effects and apple motion plugins that you can download and customize for your project to give you better motion graphics if you're interested in learning more about storyblocks and how it can help you and your projects click the first link in the description below it helps this channel out and we greatly appreciate it thanks again storyblocks for sponsoring this video Oh, I'm back in my studio and not at the lake anymore because I shot that on another time. <laughs> so let's talk about obstacle avoidance on these two drones. They're both honestly really good at avoiding obstacles. I was really pleasantly surprised with the Mavic Air 2 in particular because it's missing a couple extra cameras that the Autel Evo 2 has. One of the things that really stood out to me about the Mavic Air 2 when it came to the obstacle avoidance was how it was able to actually drive forward and if there was a bush or a tree, the thing would just continue flying really smoothly and cinematically and it would just kind of like perfectly avoid 
those obstacles without any type of jerkiness. It just seemed really natural. And this is really what you want when you're flying through a crazy scenario, just like, uh, what's his name, uh, Sam Calder. You know how he just flies through things, and I know he probably turns his obstacle avoidance off so that it doesn't interfere with anything. But if you're doing some crazy threading the needle shots, having the ability to just go forward and trust that the drone's going to avoid those obstacles that are down, back, and front, and honestly, a little bit above and uh, the side just because these sensors are so good, you're able to kind of get by with just going at it and not really thinking about it. I was running around and weaving through the bushes and different areas in the forest, and I was able to keep up fully. Even though there aren't any side sensors here, I didn't feel like I was in a hairy situation at all. And when it came to the Evo 2, I was really impressed with this obstacle avoidance as well. I just set it to track me and I ran around just like I did with the Air 2. This drone is a little bit more touchy-feely when it came to the obstacle avoidance. It did a really amazing job and obviously it should. It's got full 360 degree avoidance and I was very comfortable flying it and not even touching the remote because I knew if anything <laughs> in any way was around it, it would uh, avoid that. I, I left everything on its default setting. You can actually lower the tolerance of the obstacle avoidance on the Evo and I feel like it was a little bit too strong. I was trying to fly through a certain little bush area with like two trees on either side and I noticed that it just couldn't do it. It just kind of got hung up there because the trees were a little too close for comfort, whereas the Mavic Air 2 is able to weave through it. I do think for most people, the Mavic Air 2 is fine, but if you're doing some crazy high like speed stuff, and especially if you're doing some tracking parallel shots going full speed, on its side, uh, you're gonna wanna have those side sensors just to make sure you're not gonna slam into a wall or a tree. But if you're tracking subjects like a biker or a car and you're going forward or backwards, the Mavic Air 2 is totally sufficient. And I was very surprised with how smooth and reliable it was with its obstacle avoidance features. So for me as a professional, the 8K footage is really enticing with the Evo 2. And one other thing that I didn't mention yet is the fact that you can actually change this camera out and get the 6K one inch sensor version uh, of this camera on this drone. So if you wanna upgrade later, you could buy that. But now you're talking about, you know, several thousand dollars in with this and it's truly a professional setup. So unless you have aspirations for filmmaking and you wanna do higher end stuff, I wouldn't recommend this for most people. That's where the Mavic Air 2 really comes in. With its small and compact size and its more budget-friendly price point, the Mavic Air 2, in my opinion, is the best all-around drone right now for 2020. If you've got $1,000 to spend, I would definitely recommend the Mavic Air 2 and a couple extra propellers as well as an extra battery just to play it safe. The build quality on this thing is incredible. The new controller is really comfortable to hold. Shooting 4K is still super high quality. And these drones have gotten so good now that even this Mavic Air 2 can do professional serious work. And if you're a wedding shooter, documentary shooter, a YouTuber, this is absolutely more than enough. And even if you just want something for a hobby to play around with, this is a great option as well. I don't wanna downplay the Autel 2, however, if you are a professional looking for those extra pro features like a true log format with that extra resolution and better obstacle avoidance, then the Autel 2 is a great option. But that's enough about what I think about these two drones. Let me know what you guys think about these two in the comment section below. And if you're interested in buying either one of these two amazing drones, please consider using our affiliate link in the description down below. It means the world to us. We get a little kickback when you do that and it's just a way for us to continue making videos once again i'm dave mays this is kinotika and we'll see you next time <laughs>